For lesson 12.2, we're going to be looking at the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. Now, our goal for this lesson is to use the Pythagorean theorem to determine if a triangle is a right triangle when we have the three lengths of the three sides of the triangle. So essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking the three measurements that make up the triangle. We're going to substitute the longest side in for C, the other two sides in for A and B, and we're going to solve the equation. If the, equation's en if the equation ends up being true, then it is a right triangle. If it is not true, then it is not a right triangle. So let's go ahead and take a look at some examples. For our first example, we have triangles with side lengths 3, 4, and 5. Now you notice that I drew it to look like a right triangle, but we don't know for certain if it is a right triangle because there is not a box in the corner here. We want to determine if these three sides make up a right triangle. To do that, we're going back to a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And as I said kind of in the intro, we're going to take the longest side and substitute it in for c. So 5 will get substituted in for c. That means 3 and 4 get substituted in for a or b. It doesn't matter which one goes and where. So we're going to have 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. So what we're going to do is we're going to square these five numbers. We'll add the products together on the left side. And if the numbers end up being equal, then this is a right triangle. If the numbers are not equal, then it's not a right triangle. Let's take the next step. So the next step is to square anything. 3, it, three squared is going to be 9. Bring down our plus sign. 4 squared is 16. Is equal to 5 squared equals 25. Well, now the question we ask, does 9 plus 16 equal 25? And we see that it does. And so 25 equals 25. So this is a right triangle because 25 is equal to 25. That tells us that this is a right triangle. And those are the steps that we need to take in order to solve these types of problems to determine if a triangle is in fact a right triangle or not. Okay? So our first example, we have an example where the sides end up equaling each other, where we have a, a squared plus b squared equals 25, c squared equals 25 as well, and so because the two sides are equal to each other after we square, then it is a right triangle. Let's take a look at the next example. Second example, we have side lengths 7, 9, and 12, and we want to, again, substitute these values in, for, in the Pythagorean theorem keeping in mind that the longest side needs to be substituted in for C. So our formula again, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. We have to remember, the 12 needs to get substituted in for C. C, is going to be, C always has to be the longest side, so we substitute 12 in for C. So that means we have 7 squared plus 9 squared is equal to 12 squared. Now we add these together. 7 squared is going to give us 49. 9 squared is going to give us 81. 12 squared is going to give us 144. Now to me that doesn't look like they're going to be equal, but we need to go ahead and add 49 plus 81 together. And when we do, we get 130 is equal to 144. 144. 130 does not equal 144, and because they are not because they are not equal, that tells us that this is not a right angle, so we do not have a right triangle with this example. So our answer for this one is not a right triangle because 130 does not equal 144. Alright, now I want to give you a quick note kind of summing up what we've been going through for examples one and two which says, in order to use the converse of the Pythagorean theorem to tell if, that's supposed to be if, to tell if a triangle is a right triangle, use the longest side of the triangle for C and the shorter sides for A and B. If the equation is true, the triangle is a right triangle. Otherwise, it isn't. It is not a right triangle if the two sides are not equal after you square, then add them together. All right, so jot this note down. We have one more example to look at. All right, now for our final lesson, we have 
A marketing team is designing a logo that contains a triangle inscribed in a circle. So that means you have a picture of a circle with a triangle touching the circle at all three points. Okay, not necessarily important for this problem, but just so you guys are aware that when a triangle is inscribed in a circle, that means that all three vertices of the triangle are touching the edge of the circle. The sides of the triangle are 6.1 inches, 8.3 inches, and 10.9 inches. Is the triangle a right triangle? So let's go ahead and, and use these values for a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now looking at this value, at these values, we should see 10.9 is our biggest of the three values. So we're going to take 10.9. That's going to get substituted in for c. So we're going to have 6.1 squared plus 8.3 squared is equal to 10.9 squared. Now, I cannot do these in my head. You are certainly allowed to use a calculator to do uh, these two digit or uh, I guess decimal numbers uh, to find the square of those. Your single digit, single digit numbers and numbers up to 15 though, you should have those, you should have those memorized. We should have that list memorized from the beginning of the year. So I'm going to go ahead and use my calculator though to square these numbers. So we get 6.1 squared is 37.21 plus 8.3 squared gives us 68.89 And that's equal to 10.9 squared, which equals 118.81. And when the decimal terminates like it does for these decimals, then it's important that we use the entire decimal. Now we have to go ahead and add these together on the left side to see if the two sides end up equaling each other. So we're going to add 37.21 plus 68.89 to equal 106. 106.1 equals 118.81. Well, we can see that those two are not equal to each other, so that would tell us that this is not a right triangle. All right? So because these numbers are not equal to each other, again, this is not going to be a right triangle. A bit of a shorter lesson for 12.2 on, on the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. Hopefully at this point we're now able to use the Pythagorean theorem to determine if a triangle is a right triangle when given the lengths of the three sides. Any questions or comments, go ahead and write them down so that we can talk about them tomorrow in class.